And our next project is a music production workshop with Grayson, Rachel Bratz, and Jackie. All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rachel Brott. I use they, she pronouns. Hi, my name is Grayson Betts. I use he, him, and they, them pronouns. Hi, my name is Jackie Tyson, and I use she, her pronouns. Oh, is the, the slide seems to be... Grayson, could you switch the slide, slide please? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Alrighty. So the goal of our project was to help students get started with creating their own music. And to do this, we wanted to provide skills and tools that students could use after the workshop ended. Uh, this also meant using more accessible resources. For example, we chose a program called Waveform Free as our main music making software rather than any of its more well known paid counterparts. So students would be able to keep at it without having to worry about accessibility, accessibility of cost and such. And then lastly, uh, since digital music making can be a very intimidating prospect to get into, we wanted to create a welcoming environment where youth can connect via shared interests and really develop a passion for making music. We decided to accomplish these goals in the form of a three week workshop. We had seven main sessions total plus three additional drop in workshop days where people could start working on a song of their own and really start to apply some of the concepts they're learning. Rachel, uh, I'm we, so sorry to interrupt. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Jason, <laughs> could you make sure it's presenter view? The slides are hard to see. Oh, yeah. So it should, my, yeah, I am in presenter view. Um, so I think you're covering over. I think we see the yeah, slides. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> now we can see the slide. Okay, okay. continue. Sorry. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, we chose to use a combination of in person and virtual formats. We, so what that meant was we held sessions in person over at SPNN, while presenters simultaneously had a Zoom call running in the background, so participants could choose either attendance option. And then lastly, rather than a traditional class structure, we decided to go with what's known as a learning circle format, which has seen a lot of use over at St. Paul Public Libraries. So a learning circle format emphasizes more the principles of peer learning and collaboration. And this format actually takes advantage of the fact that none of us are full experts on the subject matter because it emphasizes decreasing some of that high, traditional hierarchy between teacher and student and emphasizing more the free share, uh, sharing of information and establishing bonds as a group. Okay, so um, in concepts we covered, um, we discussed music theory as well as music production um, and included resources for the future, right? So in music theory, we covered things like scales and rhythms. Um, we also went into songwriting. So we discussed um, both mel melody and lyric writing tips and tricks. In music production, we talked about the um, platform and navigating through the platform through waveform, we talked about audio versus MIDI inputs. Um, we discussed things like automation um, and a lot of technical heavy things as well. Um, in terms of resources for the future, we discussed um, not only free resources online that can be found, but also included things like um, learning how to publish your own work for free online. One of our successes that we would like to highlight, um, first off is that our participants that we were able to um, have attend did stay engaged throughout the entirety of the workshop. Um, and then as well, we were able to create a very robust curriculum and list of resources, right? So our um, 
we compiled a shared Google Drive um, that had subfolders included that included not only our slides that we used throughout the entirety of our workshops, but as well as session recordings um, and, and class resources um, and shared documents um, and any other information that we use during these times. So I'm going to talk about some stumbling blocks that we ran into with the workshop. Um, the first being funding. So our workshop was written into a larger grant that SPNN wrote um, in the spring, which um, they didn't end up hearing back from until it was like late June or early July, which was like we were already in the final week of our workshop. Um, so the questions around funding led to delays in our decisions in which software we were going to use and other curriculum choices and whether or not we'd be able to access computers, whether or not we'd be able to provide stipends to participants, like all these questions we had around that. Um, and so luckily we had a plan in place to do it with completely free, um, spending no money. So we ended up doing that, um, but that led to delays in um, curriculum, which led to delays in outreach, et cetera. Um, another thing was we um, decided to go hybrid in the spring. Um, we had originally planned to do it all virtually because we didn't know what was gonna happen with COVID. Um, but that led to new issues that we hadn't imagined as we hadn't planned anything in person for like the whole past year. So like things with scheduling and scheduling the space um, that led to some stumbling blocks there. And then finally reaching a more diverse audience. Um, so we had delays in outreach. And I think what we learned really is that you have to start outreach like way sooner than you think you do. Um, and also we had plans to do um, but like with the delays, we, we wish we could have done more postering and reaching out to even more organizations, um, which are things that we simply um, didn't end up having time to do. Um, some things that we learned though, and things for the future. Um, so we learned how to coordinate programs for in-person spaces. And this is huge um, considering that we hadn't done this for the entire past year. Um, very importantly, how to plan around unexpected changes. Um, and so like with planning in-person events and with planning any kind of workshop, there are always things that come up. And I think we're all really proud of the way that we were able to adapt to various situations. And then finally, most importantly, the ins and outs of music making. So we were able to take various resources online and like choosing a software, like the things that make learning how to produce your own music on your own, very confusing. And we were able to create a very tidy, compact curriculum that will take you from not knowing anything about music, music production to creating your own song. Um, and that was something that participants said that they were, that they were most, that that was most a barrier for them for creating music. And something that we really helped them through was that. Um, and also we have this curriculum online on the website and available to these participants and anyone who's interested. Um, and so that's something we're really proud of as well. Um, and finally, we'd like to thank Lizzie and Joel, the CTEP leaders for their support throughout the project, as well as Bonnie, who is the associate director at SPNN for her support as well. Um, SPNN for hosting our workshop, providing the computers, the MIDI keyboards, the projector, everything we needed and for being so flexible with us as well. And finally, the participants for being so engaged and excited throughout the workshop. And now we have time for questions. All right. Uh, so we already have a question uh, from Susan on uh, what was the age range of the students? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, so we um, planned on it being like youth ages 14 to 24 around, um, but we were willing to like go above, I guess it was actually probably 16 to 24. Um, but we went like a little below that um, in the end to gain more participants. All right. Um, we have a question from Eric. Uh, with all the uncertainty and required changes, were there any pleasant surprises? I think the, the switch to in-person had its challenges, but it was also, I think, really refreshing being able to uh, engage with, with participants uh, in a more active way than we were used to. Uh, I think, you know, and we were even able to, we were able to arrange the classroom in this sort of more informal context, have snacks, 
chat with people before and after the class. Uh, so I think that was that was a really pleasant surprise and worth it. All right, um, Pierre asked, uh, did you teach different kinds of music cultures? I don't know necessarily cultures, if we really taught differences in that. Um, we did use a bunch of different examples uh, in different genres, I would say. Um, but we mostly tried to focus on the general um, we did have participants that were much more interested in more um, like ambiance in a sense or classical. Um, and so we tried to incorporate more of that because that was what um, was the demand. Um, but we did try to include much more of a generalized um, music education than anything. We have a question for, from Ben. Uh, so what were the students interested in using these newfound skills for? Uh, what were their goals in music or beyond? Yeah, I can answer that question. Um, so one of our participants was really interested in creating soundtracks for movies. Um, and so it was, yeah, very inspired by like ambient music. Um, and it's actually going to, um, I think, school for film in the fall. So that was definitely an interest for them. Um, another participant was very interested in like um, adding their own musical instrumentation to things and like had been previously very nervous about lyrical writing. Um, and so that was something that we touched upon as well. Um, and so like those were things that they said, like especially the, the student who was interested in like lyrical writing and like adding instruments definitely said that like, well, cause we covered more lyrical things as well. Um, and they said that was definitely a benefit um, to the program is something that they were going to take away from that as well. Um, ben had kind of a follow-up question that maybe you touched on a little bit, but you know, what did the instruction in music theory comprise exactly? Yeah, um, yeah, so for the basic, like the first music theory class, we covered, um, wow, why am I forgetting this? <laughs> I was the one who taught it. <laughs> um, we covered like, chords and like notation and um, like chord progressions and like things we thought that would be useful in like the creation of music more. And I think one issue that came up like throughout the project was like how to simplify and how to decide like what to teach and what not to teach. Um, so we definitely tried to focus more on like making it very accessible and easy to understand and choosing to teach things that were very applicable like that they could use then in creating music. Yeah, and what resulted from that was essentially one, the, the first music theory session, which was a lot of the, those building blocks to, to make future things more accessible and comprehensible for people, instead of just, you know, trying to learn some music theory and just being slammed with resources that talk about suspended fourths or something like that. And then the second music theory session uh, delved more into lyric writing and songwriting tips. So some of that more advanced stuff now that they had the building blocks. All right, and we have maybe one time for one more question. This will be from Cass. Uh, so what advice or hopes would you give to folks trying to replicate or continue this work in the future? Have contingencies when you can. Uh, don't, don't wait don't hinge everything on a grant you know and on certainties um and then i think you know uh i think outreach just do even more of it um make, make it a significant portion of your focus uh yeah uh, and then i have one um i would recommend don't reinvent the wheel um that's something that we could have encountered with this especially um myself and Jackie didn't have any experience in music production or music theory very much. Um, so we had to do a lot of our own research beforehand. Um, and so it was a lot of like curriculum building and like trying to figure out what resources we can use. So we're not completely starting from scratch ourselves um, and just bringing in a lot of other resources to add more quality or better quality to our production or our workshop. 
All right. Wonderful.